And while she's coming back in, let me say one more thing. This is a screenplay, and many of you have never maybe listened to a screenplay. Listening is the major thing about this. It's ideally uh, something that you can see in your heads because the action should be there. It should tell you some things about um, what's going on and what the setting is and how things are. So um, I have no problem with you closing your eyes at some point, as long as you don't go to sleep. Um, <laughs> but um, just to, to hear it in that way. It's, it's, a, it's a very rarefied way of, of, uh, of experiencing something. So let's have at it, huh? Let's have I think it. I should talk from back there. Maybe. <laughs> so thank you all for coming. Please silence your cell phones and open your hearts. Here we go. The Caregiver, a screenplay by Blake Walton. Interior, Travis's living room, night. The door bursts open to Travis's small Chicago apartment. Two men throw themselves against a wall, violently grappling and kissing each other while closing the door and switching the light on. Travis, 55, dominates Taylor, 28, smaller, great body and sexy features. They spin to the couch and plop down. Taylor is all over him as Travis slowly fades to sleep. Dude! Mm -hmm. You shitting me? Travis opens a sleepy eye. Fuck, no, I, I just... Ta Taylor tries seducing him. Down for the count. Travis's living room, day, next morning. Travis is in the same position on the couch. He is alone. A little blurry, he sits up, gets his bearings, checks his wallet, cards and money are still there, checks his phone for time. Shit. He plays a voicemail as he goes to shower and dressing along the way. I've left you a million messages. Call me back. It's about mom. He deletes the message. Bathroom. Continuous. Travis showers, shaves, cleans up well, tries a couple shirts before landing on a winner. Quickly brushes his teeth while stuffing sides and some 8x10s in his shoulder bag. Gargles and is out the door. Chicago. Red line. L car later. Travis holds a pole while memorizing and mouthing his sides. He is distracted by a hunk nearby who also notices him. He puts the sides back in his bag and adjusts his stance to hunter mode. <laughs> Casting office waiting room later. Travis is surrounded by 30 something men. A uh, door opens. Judy, a casting assistant, says goodbye to actor Dave. Thanks, Dave. I told you so. Well, we'll keep an eye out for that email. Well, Travis, come on in. Casting office, continuous. Josh Forty is a casting director sitting behind a small table. Lucy Forty is a dignified but personable woman is at his side. Jody is behind a camera. Travis, great, have a seat. Do you know Lucy? Travis takes a seat facing them. Lucy, yeah, yeah, sure. How are you? Very well, good to see you. Travis pulls his now crumpled sides from his bag. You won't need those for now. I'm going to be frank. We're going young dad for this one. Clients, you know? Yeah, sure, clients. I brought you in anyway because the character now refers to his father and I wanted to give you a chance at that role. His father, okay. They're not even sure they're writing him in. It might be a featured background, but you're a good actor and that always shows through on this sort of job. Thank you for that, background. Hmm. Featured, might be. And there's something else. Uh, Judy, how are we doing in time? We've got an extra file. Okay, quickly. Um, okay, let me just say this, because I've known you for a while. You could work in a whole new category if you just schlub it up a little. <laughs> are we really having this conversation? Only because I think you're a good actor. For background. Sometimes a look is just more important, Travis. You want me to change my look? And personality. And <laughs> my personality. Oh, we don't want you to change. It's urbane, isn't it? You're in great shape, kind of young. Like the others out there. But so are the actual younger guys. Your type doesn't really exist. <laughs> what did you say? Stars. Sometimes, not always. My mind is breaking. Flown in. The average guys work all the time. You want me average? No, not the acting. You're good. That stays. <laughs> Keep the inside. Ditch the outside. <laughs> so, so you'd be happy if I gained 25 pounds, say, and wore plaid and khakis? Just our perspective. Professional point of view. Chicago Gay Dance Club night. Lively club filled mostly with rowdy gay men who were well into a celebration on Saturday night. Travis is with his silver-haired daddy friend, Larry, 
and, and friends, Larry, 55, and Pete, 47, on the dance floor. They go to the sidelines and join others. Twink, Jason, 28, approaches them. A sea of silver. <laughs> Premature. Jason stands in front of Travis. Hey, Dad. Travis, Travis grabs the front of his shirt and pulls him close. Don't ever call me that again. It's Mike. Jason. Buy me a drink, sailor? Barking up the wrong tree. You want to dance? Travis turns Jason to Larry. Meet Larry. Well, well, what do we got here? Bar. Travis walks away to the bar and stands next to Kurt, 30, a cute stud muffin. He holds out his hand to introduce. Travis. Whatever. Kurt begins to walk away. <laughs> Find me if I'm still here at the end of the night. I don't do rain checks. You're kind of an asshole, aren't you? Isn't that what you're after, old man? Travis swallows his pride. Sometimes I'm dead wrong. <laughs> Stop by before you leave. Don't wait up. Kurt walks away. Gary, 45, a good-looking man, has heard the exchange. That was rough. Yep, it's getting harder. The dude's blind. Glad you think so. I'm Gary. Travis's friends, Pete and Larry, with Jason in tow, interrupt. There's nobody here. We're going to ditch. Maybe go over to Chasers. You good? Chasers? Really? <coughs> okay, okay, but I'm going to need a lot more alcohol. Nice meeting you, Gary, right? They are off. Travis's living room next morning. A cell phone rings inside pants pocket on the floor. Travis stumbles in nude, wrapped in a blanket. After some effort, he finds the phone. Allie, why the fuck are you calling me at 902? Mom's home. Alice, 59, Travis's older sister and only sibling is a little worse for wear. Morning, Trav. Late night? You could say that. I'm sorry, I, I, I haven't demented for a second. Saturday night, duh, of course. Why would I think you ever change? Shut up. Rick, 30, very sexy pickup from last night, walks in wearing briefs, picks up his clothes from the floor and dresses. So why are you bothering me? Just a second. You going? Yeah, I should. You want some coffee? I'm good. Young boyfriend for the night? Shut up. It's about mom. Hey, it was fun. See you later. Rick is out the door. Later, I'll let myself out. Mom finally getting to you? Oh, Trav, that happened a long time ago. You just weren't listening. I'm done. <sighs> what do you mean? I'm done. It's your turn. I'm leaving the country. I'm finally moving to Ireland, so just take over. That's absurd, Allie. You know I can't do that. Why not? Are you serious? My career, for a starter. The last time I looked, you didn't have a career. Give me a break. I got a whole lot of stuff in the hopper. First refusal on a commercial. Producers interested in an indie film. And catering jobs galore. I know, that's way past your time to grow up, Travis. How many middle-aged men do you know that still go out to clubs on the weekend and are struggling to pay rent? I get by fine and you know it. <clears throat> you have three weeks. I'm not moving in with Mom. I'm sorry, you don't have a choice. <laughs> Put her in a home. No, 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 she won't have it. There's only one <coughs> plan. She stays put, and you step up and take over for me, Trav. I have spent, I, 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 I've had no life. You've had plenty of time to make something of yourself personally. I, I don't give a shit about what you do, trying with your future. I just, I need to move on with mine. So man up. Besides the fact that I don't have even the vaguest interest in caretaking, the witch hates me. She can't possibly be good with this. It was her idea. Well, it was a terrible idea, and I don't believe that. It was. But possible motivation. I, I wouldn't even know how to, to fucking start. What am I supposed to do with my apartment? You're asking me that? Is if I give a damn? You'll figure it out. I'm not going to do it. I'm putting mom on. Don't even I'm fucking go. think about relax, it. Relax, relax, relax. What's the rush all of a sudden? Give me a month at least. I booked my flight. How about you get some professionals in? First, who's gonna pay for that? Mom's not. All she can afford is that home health care team from the state, and it's real limited. And it sounds like you're debating the issue. You don't realize, but you don't realize that I've considered every angle already. I'm sorry, Jeff. You don't have a choice. Fuck. Although, I am sure that you'll find some way to ditch. What the fuck am I supposed to do about it? Take care of mom. It's real simple. Oh, fuck, it's, it's hitting me now. You knew it was inevitable, and I'm... <clears throat> I am 
you saying it one more time? It is my turn now to have a life. And crap on mine. Well, Aaron, go fucking bra. Mom's driveway, day. Uber is parked with the trunk popped open in the driveway of Pauline's Galena, Illinois farmhouse. Travis is frozen. This is it, man. Travis snaps out of it and slowly climbs out of the car. Mom's driveway. He gets his five bags, slams the trunk, and the car is gone. Mary, 36, a no-nonsense home health care worker, stands on the front porch. Hi. You Travis? Yep. Mary. You spoke to Louise, I believe. Your mom's napping. That'll give me a chance to go over a few things with you before I leave. You're not staying? <laughs> no need now that you're here. It's pretty basic stuff. Travis approaches Burton like a pack horse. Let me help you with those. I got it. You sure? Travis hands her the smallest bag. Mom's front room. Travis's mother, Pauline, 85, sleeps upright in a chair near the window. She still has traces of being a handsome younger woman. Travis sets his bags down. So this is a setup. Spends a lot of time here. Still sleeps in her room over there. I need to show you your medicine, suggest diet. Plus, I, um, I have sort of a schedule for you to glance at. They start to leave. Who's that? Is that Travis? Yes. Oh, come over here and say hello to your mother. Travis obeys. Pauline seems unusually soft. She puts her hand on his cheek. Oh, Travis. He tries to kiss her on the forehead and she brushes him away. That's enough of that now. <laughs> I need some ice water. Could, could you do that for your mother? I can get it for you. No, I want my son to get it. Travis turns to go to the kitchen. You sure you can figure that out? Travis glares at Pauline and goes. <laughs> Don't you ever interfere with my business again. You hear? You know the drill, Pauline. If you don't like the way I operate, you can request someone else. Now I have to attend to one more client today, and I just like to stay until your son got here. So I, I can fill in on the particulars. Could you just stay a few minutes longer? Travis steps in with a glass of ice water. Mary begins packing up. Here you are, Mom. Oh. Oh, now look at that. Pauline starts laughing. <laughs> Mary, look at that glass he chose. What's the matter with it? Oh, it's, 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 it's just straight. too big. Oh, I can barely get my hands around it. Look at this, Mary. <laughs> there are better ones with handles. I'll show you. Travis rips it from Pauline's hand. Mom, if it matters you do you so much, why couldn't you just let tell me? He starts back to the kitchen. Now, don't start. Out on the wrong foot, Travis. Any foot I start on is going to be the wrong foot. He goes. We have company. Mary follows. Mom's kitchen. Travis is violently searching the cupboards. Mary hands him a cup from the strainer. A lot of the times they start getting particular about how a thing, how to do things. That's nothing new. Mary hands him a folder. Here's instructions for general care and contact information for the team. Most everything we do is covered. Um, she gets a couple of visits a month, so I'm reducing mine to once every two weeks. She can bathe herself, or we can get someone here to just clean her up. Just call me number. Yeah, I'm a little lost. Mary gets a cup with handles from the strainer and fills it. Already? Don't worry, you'll catch on. Right now you have a cup of water to worry about. Mary hands him the cup. Uh, oh yeah, uh, meals? Oh, uh, well that's for the two of you to figure out. Your sister had a routine. She wrote it down. It should be in a folder somewhere. Small bell rings in the other room. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> First thing I would do is figure out how to get rid of that bell. Wish me luck. <laughs> Travis moves to take a cup of water to the front room. Mary holds out a small tablet and pen. You might want to write some stuff down. Travis leaves. Upstairs hallway. Later, Travis carries his five bags and finds the guest room storage closet. He rejects it and goes to Alice's room. It's comfortable and warm, but with way too many frilly feminine touches. He drops his bag without unpacking. Mom's front room, later. Mary is gone, Travis faces Pauline. He holds a tablet and takes notes. Now, Alice said <coughs> we got groceries enough for a week. I'm not strong enough yet to see for myself, so I want you <coughs> to give me a rundown so, so you can get what's needed. I'll give you some cash. Did you settle in? I put my bags in Allie's room. No, I, I, I don't want that. That's a guest room in case. So you want me in the storage closet? 
But uh, that there should be sheets and towels in the bathroom, which I expect you to keep spick and span. That's the guest toilet. Nobody else uses mine down here. Who are all these guests you're expecting? Well, you don't know what I get up to. Besides, there's a home help people. I'd hide my money if I were you. Oh, by the way, I, I don't trust any of them except Mary. Pauline begins dozing. Mom? Oh, Evie, I'm going to nap for a bit. Alice's room. Later, Travis begins unpacking. He calls Alice. Allie, this is a joke, right? Please tell me you're next door having a big laugh. Actually, I'm about to go to bed. Oh, for a big day tomorrow. I'm moving into the cottage. <laughs> sure, pour salt into the wound. Oh, come on, Trav. It's just first aid shivers, I'm sure. She wants me to clear out the storage room and keep yours for guests. First of all, what guests? So I'm moving into your frilly little princess palace. I'm sure she never comes up here. Be careful. She has spies. Very funny. <laughs> She's so pretty crafty, Trav. Fuck, I can't do this. I'm sorry about the storage room. In five years, I never much got around to that. I think there might be some of your stuff in boxes from the last room. Oh, look, I, I got some other questions. Mom's bell rings from the front room. <laughs> Shit, the queen is calling. You want to talk to her? No, nope, we do a regular Sunday call, but say hello. I'll talk to you later. Any ideas about how to get rid of the bell? Good luck. Bye, Trav. Mom's kitchen later. Travis, clearly unhappy and out of his element, shuffles around the kitchen, lost. He refers to a slip of paper looking for and finding chicken breasts, vegetables, potatoes, which he lines along the counter, but seems to have no idea what to do with them. He struggles with cooking pots and pans, knives, seasoning plates. He happens upon a half filled bottle of scotch, eyes and kisses it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He pours it into a rocks glass. Carrying the glass as he goes, he begins the simple preparation of frozen vegetables plopped into boiling water. Sauteed chicken breasts, a salad poured from a bag. Mom's porch. He takes a short break and goes through the back door to the porch. He slips and looks out to the trees and hills, takes a deep breath, downs the rest of the scotch, and walks back through the door to the kitchen. Mom's front room. Travis stands holding a plate. You want to eat at the table? Nah, this is easier. I can see the TV. Yeah, give me one of those TV trays against the wall. Travis gets a folding tray, places it in front of her, and adds a plate. You've been in the chair all day. You sure you don't want to change the scenery? Now, why would you say that? Put the TV on the Fox News. Why am I not surprised? Oh, just give me the remote. I'll do it. Travis does, then leaves the room. Pauline can't work the remote. Travis steps in with a plate for himself. It, it, it's broken. Still holding the plate, Travis helps. It's upside down. Now why would you hand it to me that way for? <laughs> TV turns on, Travis starts to clear a spot at the corner of the nearby dining table, which looks like it's never been used for anything but a dumping place. We're stuck with that at home. Don't move anything without asking. And Travis gingerly finds a small area that just fits his plate. Uh, what do you want to drink? Well, there's probably some iced tea in the fridge. Kitchen. He finds the iced tea, gets two tumblers, rejects one, gets a cup with handles from the strainer. <laughs> so you can teach an old dog. <laughs> Rough. Mom's front room. He brings the iced tea. Hands Pauline her cup and goes to his dinner at the corner spot. <coughs> he is clearly uncomfortable, looking like he is at the kids' table. <laughs> Pauline glances over and begins laughing. <laughs> what? Oh, you, you, you're just crouching there like a, I don't know what. <laughs> Pauline's home, later. Travis stands outside the closed door of Pauline's bathroom. Toilet flushes and water runs. Pauline steps out with a cane. Travis tries to take an arm for support. No need, I'm not a cripple. Just walk nearby so in case I'm about to fall. With no real job to perform, Travis vaguely accompanies her to the room. No, I'm not fine from here on. Just, just make sure all the doors are locked. I can keep the hallway light on in case I need to do a little tinkle in the night. I like to rise at six, always did. Dear the bird catches the worm. Pauline closes her door. 
Good night, Mom. <laughs> Mom's kitchen later, Travis finishes the dishes, pours another scotch, and steps out into the back porch. Mom's back porch. Travis in his imagination. Ah! It's so fucking quiet! <laughs> back to reality, Travis leans on the railing and texts those slid. God help me. Alice's room, morning. Alarm, 6 a.m. Travis wakes up in confusion and hits the alarm off. Lying in bed, he looks around the room realizing where he is. Oh, shit. He wrestles with the frilly bedclothes. Dressed in pajama bottoms and t-shirt, he goes downstairs to Mom's kitchen. Pauline seems confused as she's trying to make coffee in a Mr. Coffee machine. She spills grounds on the counter. Damn it. Travis steps in and goes to her. Mom, what are you trying to do? Don't sneak up on me like that. I, I made a mess. I'm all thumbs. Well, let me do that. I can make the damn morning coffee. You just tend to the mess is all. And what do you... Huh? What do you have for breakfast? I wish you would learn to speak up. What do you have for breakfast? Now that's unnecessary. <laughs> cereal, ah. which I can get myself if you just get me a bowl from that cupboard. He brings two bowls down. If there's grapefruit, I'll have that too. But it's got to have some sugar on it or I won't touch it. Travis finds a grapefruit in the refrigerator. There's grapefruit. Huh? You've got grapefruit. <laughs> we'll slice that open and you can have the only half if you want. I like to use the grapefruit spoons in the drawer there. Travis finds the spoon. Pauline oh. pours cereal into a bowl. I remember these. Huh? We had these as kids. I don't think so. I need some milk. Put, put some in the little pitcher in the strainer. Travis gives his, the milk and the pitcher. I see you did the dishes last night. You gotta empty the strainer, but I'll have to tell you where everything goes. We can do that later. She moves to the table holding her bowl precariously. She sets it down and then moves to get her coffee. Travis opens the cupboard for coffee mugs. You have a particular cup? No, any one at all will do. Travis grabs a mug but pauses, holding it in the air, anticipating. He okay. mouths the words with Except all. that one. <laughs> <laughs> Puts it back and takes another, holding it out for approval. Pauline nods, yes. Okay. Travis inspects the coffee machine. What happened here? It's turned out. Okay. Pauline sits at the table. Huh? Did you put water in? Huh? Of, of course I did. It looks like I need some water. Well, go ahead then and put more water in it if you're such an expert. I, I just don't see a reason to make such a fuss about it. I'm gonna need the sugar bowl. It's on the counter. Travis adds water. They are silent. Travis brings the sugar. Pauline eats her cereal. Travis prepares the grapefruit for both and brings it to the table. He pours Pauline's coffee and brings it and the small pitcher of milk to Pauline. Do you have any half and half? Probably not since Allie left. <laughs> two peas in a pot. I don't know why you two need that fancy stuff. It's, it's just spruced up milk. Travis gets coffee, pours cereal, brings both to the table and sits opposite Pauline. They look to each other from time to time without speaking. The paper should be in the mailbox out by the road now. You want it? Pauline gives him a look. Travis goes to the front door. <laughs> front driveway, barefoot Travis walks gingerly and awkwardly across the gravel drive to the roadside mailbox. Several cars and one truck pass, beeping horns as they do. Travis vaguely waves. Mom's kitchen. Travis steps in with the paper and hands it to Pauline. Of course, it'd be nice to be able to read it. Glasses. Pauline gives him a look. Check my bedside table. Just don't snoop. Travis leaves. <laughs> Pauline sweeps her chest with her hand and discovers her glasses are dangling around her neck. She laughs at herself. Oh, it's, it's a good thing your head is attached is all I can say, old Pauline. <laughs> good thing your head is attached. She unfolds the paper and begins reading. Travis pops his head in. Mama, I just don't find them. I even checked your chair in the front room. Pauline pulls the paper down, revealing the glasses. 
Found them. <laughs> Travis sits. Pauline reads the paper, reacting to the news. Oh, no. What? Oh, that's just terrible. Ignoring Travis, she laughs, then oh. more serious. Oh, now that's just not right. What is it right? Pauline ignores him. They sit in silence. They gone and done it again. Who? Pauline ignores him. Travis refreshes his coffee and heads to the back porch. Mom's back porch. Travis sits, looks out, and sighs. Mom's front room. Travis helps Pauline settle into her chair. That's fine. That's fine. Now, now you go and, and you need to do what you need to do upstairs. I, I, I just need my, my programs turned on is all. Travis turns on the TV to her channel. And I'm gonna need some iced tea before so long, so you might as well get it now. There should be some in the fridge. Travis goes. Pauline begins watching and quickly closes her eyes to sleep. Travis quietly brings a glass of iced tea and sets it on the table next to her chair, where she is apparently sleeping. He lifts the bell, debating whether he should hide it. <laughs> <laughs> Storage bedroom later. The room is used as an attic dressed with small side tables, a twin bed with bedding, a dresser, lamps, chairs, odd memorabilia, and cardboard boxes. Travis starts sorting items and peeks in the boxes, then stacks them against the walls. He finds a box with Travis's stuff written on it. He clears a path to the bed, removes items on it to make a space to sit, and brings the box to the bed. He slowly opens the flaps and pulls out spiral notebooks and folders from high school, a drawing from second grade, an award from spelling, a small gold plastic Oscar, a, sm a high school yearbook, each seemingly insignificant to him. Then he finds his first toy, a small plastic souvenir cartoonish British sailor in a faded felt uniform. <laughs> Travis cracks a smile. He clears a spot on the dresser and places the sailor prominently. Travis hears a male voice in conversation with his mother. He slips downstairs to front room. As Travis steps in, he sees Pauline with Frank Freeman, 78. A personable sort who stands be before her chair. Speak of the devil. Uh, Travis, this here is Frank. Pleased to meet you. Your mom has been telling me about you getting here on the bus. Hi. I was telling him how you don't have a car. And I'm not sure how you're going to get to the stores and everything. Yeah, I, I, I can haul you any time you need for the time being, until you get settled a bit more. Thank you. I wasn't clear how I was going to get around. My old rattle trap died a while back. Allie sold hers. Looks like I might be at your mercy. Sorry. That's why, Alfred. I've got some time right now if you need it. Pauline holds out a short list and an envelope with cash. Okay, I'll go throw some clothes on. I'm here, here's some money. Travis takes the list and cash and goes to change. Frank's car, later in the day, Frank and Travis drive to the grocery store. Pauline tells me you're an actor. Yep. She pointed you out in a commercial a couple years back. <laughs> oh God, which one? I think you were drinking beers with your buddies. As far as I can tell, she was kind of proud. First I've heard. You know, we've got a pretty good little theater in town. <laughs> Thanks. Probably can't work there. Yeah, just a suggestion. Don't mean to pry. General store day. Frank sits with Claire, 36, the personable owner who is stocking shelves. Travis with cart gathers items on the list. He has a problem getting a box of crackers from the top shelf. Shim, 31, tall and very good looking, comes down the aisle. Uh, let me get it for you. Fantasy. Shim, shirtless in slow motion, easily reaches and hands it to Travis, <laughs> stares at it, holds it a second too long, and smiles before releasing it. Reality, Shim easily reaches, gives it to Travis, and walks away. <laughs> Get a grip, Trav. General store, Travis is at the cashier, Linda 19, quiet at first, she doesn't even look into his eyes. Find everything? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Frank brings Claire over. This here's Travis. Clarissa is the owner. Oh, Claire. Welcome. I hear you're staying with Pauline. Uh, for a while. Well, let me know if there's anything you need special. And if you have someone in hand, you'd be happy to bring groceries and whatnot on to, this, to the home. 
Tell them about Fridays. Oh, I don't know if you'd be interested. Mostly younger folks, but, but a bunch of us usually gather on Friday nights at DJ's, my boyfriend's bar. Thanks, I'll see if I can get permission. This stops everyone for an awkward second or two. I mean a ride. Of course, well, hope you join us. Mom's kitchen later, Pauline sits at the table directing Travis as he puts away the groceries. She shows her two can, he shows her two can. What is that? Beats. Oh, left side, upper shelf, right behind you. <clears throat> you still waiting on people. The catering? Yep, sometimes. For extra cash when I'm not working. All the refrigerator stuff, I know, fridge, but... Doesn't matter much where. As long as I can find it. I thought that was work. When I say work, I'm talking about acting, Mom. Oh, that. <laughs> Frank says you pointed me out in a, on TV once. Yeah, I was surprised. Allie told me. He said you might have been a little proud. He holds up a, a couple cracker boxes. Far right. Were you? What? <laughs> a little proud. I don't remember. He looks directly at him. I guess that's a lot to ask for. <laughs> Mom's front room later, Travis brings her plate and drink and places them on the TV tray. You okay with the TV? Yep. <clears throat> you mind if I eat in the kitchen? You do what you want. Travis leaves her. Alice's room next day morning. Travis wakes <coughs> up naturally, checks the clock next to his frilly bed. 6 a.m. Soft morning light gives the room a dreamy glow. Wearing shorts and t-shirt, he goes over to the door, cracks it open, and listens. Quiet from downstairs. Mom's front room. Travis comes down the last stairs, tiptoes gingerly through the quiet room with the same soft light. As he goes to the kitchen, he hears faint sounds of breakfast prep. Mom's kitchen. Travis steps, stops at the door, startled by what he sees. Brock, 30, an athletic, dark-haired male, stands cooking at the stove with his back to him, dressed only in a chef's hat with a bib apron covering the front of an otherwise hot, naked body. <laughs> Brock slowly turns to face Travis. I have something for you. <laughs> <laughs> Alice's room. The alarm wakes Travis from his dream. <laughs> Seeing it is 6 a.m., he pulls himself out of the frilly bed, wrestles with the ruffles, he slips on his jeans and a t-shirt and heads downstairs. Mom's front room. As Travis approaches the kitchen, he sees a light is on. There is a knock at the back door. Oh, now there's the door. Polish your horses. I have something for you, Pauline. Pauline's kitchen. Pauline, using a cane, opens the door to Chet, 47, a pleasant but unassuming man with a good build and average features. He's holding a box from which comes a distinct kitten mew. Now what'd you go and do? Oh, come on here, I gotta sit. Chet, st Chet steps in holding a box. I heard Allie left you all alone, and I thought you might like a little kitty to keep you company. Chet sees Travis at the doorway. Pauline sits at the table. Good morning. Uh, that's just my son, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do I smell coffee? Uh, there's some over there from yesterday, but it's still good once you heat it up. This here's Chet. Travis throws coffee out, starts a fresh pot. Sorry to disturb your breakfast. Nonsense. Now, let me see what you brought before I tell you to take it away. Chet brings the box with three very young kittens. Oh, now what am I going to do with these? Aren't they sweet? You get to choose one or see which one chooses you. Now that's nonsense. Travis approaches Chet and notices a faint spark. They're really small. I'm just been weaning. Now how am I supposed to take care of a cat? Chet holds sweet pea up to Pauline's face. It'll be independent before you know it. Right now, I just need some canned food and water. Oh, that'll have to be my son, and he can barely feed himself. <laughs> <laughs> you do know I'm standing here, right? <laughs> Chet gives him a wave, Travis finds a cup. And I won't have a pen all over my new carpet. Coffee, anybody? Thanks, and that's my quota for the day. All right, uh, actually, I gotta get moving. Chet takes care of handiwork for me and most of the people in the area <laughs> when he's not trying to pawn off pets like he is here. <laughs> so what do you think? I'm gonna pass. I'll take it. Don't be too hasty. 
I don't think if I want a pet in this house. Well, if you change your mind, Pauline, if you can tell me where to get the food. Travis takes sweet pea from Chet. I have some in the truck for starters, some litter too. She'll take that to that right away. Then it's on your head, son. And the second it poops on my floor, it goes straight out the door. Chet takes the box and goes for the front door. Travis places sweet pea into his mom's arms and follows Chet. I'll come out to the truck. Travis leaves. Now what am I supposed to do with it? Awkward at first, she pets Sweet Pea, who begins purring. Look at your pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> Back porch, driveway. Chet rummages in his truck to find a few cans of cat food. Well, this is what she's eaten so far. How do you know it's a girl? I took a peek under the hood. <laughs> <laughs> That was a dumb question, I guess. I guess I mean, I, I, so, you, so you knew already, and of course you did. God, I guess I need some. I, just, I am so grateful to have another being to talk to. What do you, have, uh, what do, you do for my mother? I, I know general, but. Chet hands a small bag of litter to Travis. I bet you can find a plastic bin or something to put this in. Ever have cats? Uh, no, but eh, pretty simple, really. Oh, I need to check on her and see if she needs anything special done. See, she has a whole crew. I, I met Frank yesterday. We all share the responsibility. I, I just, well, obviously she seems pretty self-sufficient. Uh, she was, then she fell. Kind of unstable after that. She fell. Yes, when she fell, it wasn't anything serious, but that changed her. Uh, uh, sure, of course, uh, when she fell. So I think you got everything you need for now? Travis stands with arms full, Chet gets into his truck. Looks like it's gonna be a bright and beautiful day. Good morning. Travis watches Chet drive off. Mom's back porch, arms full, he heads for the back door and stands for a moment watching his mother through the window. She holds Sweet Pea, talking warmly to it. Aren't you the sweetest thing? I wonder what your name is, huh? Oh, you like to be petted, don't you? Yes, you do like to be <laughs> Mom, why didn't anybody tell me you fell? You look like you just bought out the whole cat store. I don't know where you're gonna fit in all of that. See if they room in the pantry. TJ's bar night. The bar is frequented by a small group of mostly 30 and 40 year old patrons with a few older locals. Younger locals, including Linda from the store, are gathered away from them in a corner. Claire is at the bar talking to her boyfriend, DJ, 38, a former jock with a kind soul. Travis walks up to her. Travis, great you showed up. DJ, this is Travis. They shake hands. Yes, you gather. DJ is my boyfriend. Well, let's get you a drink and then introduce. What do you have? First drink's always on the house. A uh, beer? You came to the right place, but you gotta be more specific. I got a shitload. Check the wall. Me and Dee went to a brewery tour before opening. I guess the Pilsner? Coming up. Next time we'll get you situated with the flight, but I want you mobile right now. This is Shem. Travis is new right. Shem from the store holds out his hand and they shake. I think you helped me in the store, right? I'm not sure. My wife Dee. Fantasy. Tap. Reality. My wife, Vicky. Vicky, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Babe? Everybody, introduce yourself to Travis. He's new. I'm right over there. Claire joins DJ to solve a problem. Travis stands alone, then wanders to the pool table where Tom, 30, a farmer's boy, sexy in the middle of a game with his buddy Dave, 30. Tom notices Travis and alternately eyeing him on the table, returning to Travis after a good shot. Dave is constantly moving and seems to hands-on friendly in what is clearly a bromance with Tom. Putting his arm around his shoulders, pouncing on his back, tickling him when he misses a shot, slapping his butt, Tom continues to add, I, I, Travis. Chet approaches, dressed a little nicer than usual. He breaks the spell. Oh, hey, Travis. Oh. Hey, Chad. Didn't know you'd be here. Linda hands Dave a beer as Shelly, 25, Tom's girlfriend, hands him a beer. He puts his arm around her while still eyeing Travis. Hey, Tom. Dave. Challenge you to a doubles later? Sure. Later, Grandpa. 
<clears throat> what do you say? Are you good? Because I suck. Linda, Dave, Shelley, and Tom rack up for another game. Chet and Travis move back toward the bar. I suck too, but if we wait long enough, they both get too wasted to win. <laughs> they started hitting high flyers right off the pool table. I used to call those home runs. <laughs> which, which one's Dave? The noisy one. <laughs> Believe it or not, his dad Bill and I were friends in high school. Then Dave was born, I got married, and we sort of lost track. We're different anyway. Did you grow up here? Born and bred. Patty, 43, fun-loving and brash, puts an arm around Chet. Introduce me to your friend. Patty, this is Travis. You're very handsome, aren't you? Thanks. <laughs> Pauline's his mom. I'm staying with her. This is the guy you were talking about. Careful. <laughs> Why, what? Uh, Patty zip, zips her lips. How about darts? There's an ongoing mini competition every Friday night. Winners get free beer. Darts in 10 minutes. What I tell you? Ha! <laughs> it's a sign, come on. I'm even lousier at darts. <laughs> Tom's gonna play, probably. What the fuck? Let's team up. I, I, I'm not gonna make an ass of myself. They always forgive you the first time. <laughs> I'll watch. Every party has a pooper, that's what we invited you. Party pooper, party pooper. <laughs> that's right, shall be nice. I'm gonna sit out too. Uh, free beer. Clara any, Burgess. Any takers? I'm actually thinking I might need the gift home soon. Oh, you just got here. Well, glad you could join us. Hope you can stay longer next time. You come Friday regular. Claire goes to list others in the dark bag. You don't have a car, do you? Uh, no, Frank dropped me. Chet has a truck. <laughs> Chet darts Patty a look. I can take you. That'd be great. They are out the door as Travis takes one more glance at Tom who is looking at him. Chet's truck. They are silent for a while. Jazz plays quietly on the radio. I love this stuff. <sighs> me too. More silent travel. What do you think? I was wondering. I'm <laughs> sorry. You, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Um, uh, what goes on here the rest of the week? What do you? What do people do for entertainment? Oh gosh, it's um kind of quiet, I guess. I'm not really a good one to ask. I'm kind of dull myself. People go out to dinner. Oh. Uh, other than that, I'm uh, bowling moves, I guess. They're silent until parked in the driveway. Okay. Do you want to go out to dinner? Um, oh. Uh, you no, well, like, like as, as friends. Just guys eating, right? Buddies have a meal. That's right. A cafe at Italian or French, it doesn't matter. <laughs> they pause and squarely look at each other. <laughs> Travis gets out of the truck. He walks around the chat side. Thanks. Travis walks toward the house. Chet waits as Travis turns back. Go! <laughs> Waiting for you to safely get in? Hmm. A gentleman. Travis turns away with a slight grin, opens the back door, displays it to Chet, who then drives away. Mom's kitchen. Pauline sits sleeping with head down at the table. Mom? Pauline stirs. Oh, I must have dozed off. What are you doing in the kitchen? Are you waiting up for me? Oh, no, I, 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 I just was getting a cup of water. You were waiting up for me. <laughs> Let's get you to your room. He starts to help. I can manage. I gotta tinkle first. You just make sure we, we're all locked up and the lights are out. She stumbles slightly. Travis grabs her elbow. Let's get you to the bathroom. Mom's back porch. Travis steps out with scotch in hand. It is later. He takes a seat, takes a sip, and looks out over the yard. Mom's kitchen, Sunday. Sunday morning, Travis is attempting breakfast, eggs, bacon, and toast. Pauline sits at the table, walk, or talking on the phone. Sweet pea is at her feet. Well, that sounds nice. That makes me happy that you settled in. What about the neighbor? Huh? 
Now, I ask you to send some pictures, so I, 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 wish, I wish you would, huh? Uh, well, not much. Chet brought over a little kitty named Sweet Pea. Pauline lifts Sweet Pea to her lap. Travis is taking care of it. There, there, there you are. Let's say hello to Allie. <laughs> She's a comfort as long as she doesn't poop on my floor. <laughs> Huh? Well, you'll have to ask him that. Wants to know how you're getting on. Allie, I'll call a little later. Trying to make me Sunday breakfast. Right now. Huh? Your sister says good luck. Travis Clares. I'm going to say goodbye now. And, huh? Well, no, I, I just don't want to keep you from... Okay, now we'll, we'll, we'll talk again next week. I miss you, sweetie. I love you, too. She hangs up in size. Pauline is unusually somber. Scrambled okay? Huh? I don't think that sounds fine. I don't, I don't know if I want that much. Don't? Truth is, I'm a little tired. I might want to just go sit in the front room. She rises and heads to the front room. Okay. Travis observes her as she leaves. Storage room later. Travis begins sorting and moving boxes. He finds what looks like memorabilia regarding himself. He pulls out a mimeograph program from his fourth grade school show, Simpleton, and a homemade Mother's Day card. There are pictures of him when he was 10 with a smiling Pauline. He goes through two other boxes filled with odd items and takes them downstairs to Pauline. Mom's front room. Travis sits the boxes next to her chair. I thought we'd start with these two. Huh? Oh, now I bet that's all junk. Travis holds up an old figurine. I have no use for that. What else is in there? He shows her. I don't know, candle holders, more little statues. I remember this one. Hmm? I, I don't think so. Allie was putting together junk for charity or a yard sale. I'll bet that's all this is. Car sound parking in the driveway. Now, who's that? Can you see? Travis looks through the curtains. Mom's driveway. A young father, young mother, two young girls, all dressed conservatively for church, get out of the car. They walk toward the front door front porch with Bibles and pamphlets in hand. Mom's front room. A nice little family. It looks like Bible thumpers. Oh, here they go again. Just hide. Don't answer the door. Travis walks right over to the door. Huh? This might be fun. Mom's front door. Should start naked, Travis opens the front door. Oh. Good morning, brother. I'd like to talk to you the about- The eyes scan down. The girls scream. Get back into the car. The mother gathers the girls. You should be ashamed. The family scrambles back into the car. Don't you want to leave me some pamphlets? <laughs> Mom's front door. Fully dressed, Travis walks back into the room. They drove away. How did it work that I just fulfilled a lifelong fantasy. <laughs> she refers back to the boxes. This here and probably the second box you give to Frank to take away. Or jazz. I, I, I don't have any use for any. Travis perks up. And what do they. Huh? Where do they take this stuff? Well, you'll have to ask them. Mom's driveway day. Chet and Dra Travis each carry a box to the bed of the truck. I wish there were more. Uh, any amount's good. Charity shop's always thankful. I want to stop by the little theater first, uh, though, because they were talking about needing some household stuff for the play. You want to come? Uh, uh, let me just. Yes, um, I'll, I'll be right back. A little theater later. Chet and Travis carry boxes through the stage door. Vicky approaches, sound of a rehearsal on stage. Chet, what have you got there? Oh, Pauline was getting rid of some stuff you might need for the set. This is her son, Travis. Yeah, we met at TJ's. You're an actor, right? Uh, that's what they told me. Have a look around. There's a play practice on stage. <laughs> Chet helps with the boxes. Stage wings. Travis wanders to the wings and watches the cast members on stage holding scripts, horsing around and laughing, clearly having fun. He watches with longing and a smile. He catches himself and turns back to Chet. Ready to go? Charity awaits. Sure. Ch 
charity shop. Later, Travis watches as Chet places a box on the counter and gets a hug from Maureen, 87, a very spry volunteer. You are such a good man. Chet tr joins Travis and they leave the shop. Chet's truck later. Chet and Tra Chet Travis drive to Pauline. So how are you so perfect? <laughs> you don't know me very well. You always just do the right thing? Far from it. There was a time when people wouldn't even answer the door. I don't believe that. Really? Yep. You gonna tell me about that? Nope. <laughs> okay. They turned into Pauline's driveway. Um, did you think about dinner? You mean the date? <laughs> did you? You pick me up? Uh, we, we don't, don't have, have a car. We have a date somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and you drive me to my door. Travis gets out and walks around the Chet's window. Again, you don't have a car. So, Mr. Perfect, what are you thinking? Tonight? Oh, uh, that's or not. Night. Night. Mommy's it's been tomorrow. Tomorrow. Just, just getting time. time. Used to. Wednesday. 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 <laughs> I'm sure that'd be fine. That'll give me some time. Travis begins walking to the back door. He turns back with one more eye to eye. <laughs> Chet drives away. Mom's kitchen. Mom is at the kitchen table doing the newspaper crossword puzzle. Travis prepares soup with crackers. Hmm? Can I ask you something? No, I'm in the middle of this. <laughs> Are you stuck? No. You need any help? <laughs> Baby fox, three letters. Cub? Nope. Last letter is T so far. Kit? I don't know why I know that. Well, I'll put that in. That is pencil so I can always erase. Who ever heard of Kit? You want bread or crackers? Uh, see if there's some salt cheese. That's all I ever have. You used to like oyster crackers. That's what we grew up on. Did I? I guess I did. Pauline goes back to the puzzle. Travis serves the soup. So was that your question? What? Crackers or bread or... It... No. Uh... It was about Dad. Huh. Well, never mind. <laughs> I, I don't see any sign of him. Huh? I keep thinking I'm going to find some sign of him in one of those boxes. You won't. Silence. Mom? That's the end of that. Where's his stuff? Silence. Pauline is engrossed with the puzzle. The medals they gave us, the pictures. And they, they're gone. Where? Long gone and out of sight. Where? It's none of your business. And, and what are you getting so riled up about? He was my father. And there was no love lost on you. I don't need to hear that. Then why did you start? And I still have some good memories. <laughs> then you probably made them up. Laughter. He treated you real bad. Do you remember that? I, I was what, four? I don't remember much from that time. How about Allie? Oh, no. See, she used to run to him when she was mad at me. He loved his darling little daughter. But not his darling little boy. Probably not. He used to get embarrassed, especially if his buddies were over. Why are you even talking about this? I never knew that. You, 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 you were acting like a little fairy. Dolls and dress up. I was four. That riled him. He basically kicked us out since I, I wouldn't straighten you up. Wanted to keep Allie. I knew he could never take care of her. Hell, he could barely take care of himself. He was worthless. He couldn't do anything. 
So he ended up kicking all three of us out. You always told me. Huh? You always told me it was your decision to leave. Now don't go putting words in my mouth. You wanted to move to us somewhere better and he didn't want to come. That's not what I told that you. That is what you told us. You even sat us down. He kicks us out because of me? Now that's a lie. No, you don't tell a four-year-old his daddy hates him. But sometime later, maybe? No. Is that why you resent me so much? None of that sass. Why do you have it in for me, Mom? I'm not carrying on with this anymore. I need to go sit in my chair. No, you're going to have soup. Charles delivers the soup and saltines. Here. I don't want it. It's tough. Travis goes out the back door. Road near Mom's. Travis walks along the road, first briskly, then slowly, then down to a halt. Fuck! Mom's front room later. Travis walks in through the front door. Pauline is asleep in her chair. At her feet is a box filled with pictures. There is a Ziploc bag with pictures in her lap. She's holding a family photo of the four of them taken when Travis was three. Another of Travis when he was 10. He leaves her. Gym. Day. Fantasy. Music blares as Travis and full gym wear works out on an upper body machine. Shim walks by with very little clothing and stops. So, how are you enjoying your freedom? Feels like home. Anything I can help you with, let me know. Shim walks away. Travis continues pumping in rhythm. <laughs> Alice's room. Dressed in sweats and t-shirt, Travis bubble, Travis's bubble bursts as he continues doing burpees, then quits. Ah! Lying on the floor, he gets his phone and calls. Uh, yeah, uh, do you have an introductory rate or, or, or some kind of trial? How about senior? <laughs> yeah, I got it. You need me in person so you can sell me on something. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll come in at some point. And you're who? Brett. Okay, Brett. 